Good evening and welcome to our prayer meeting tonight here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. It is Thanksgiving week and it's an advance of thanks, happy Thanksgiving from us. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, so uh, we are going to sing a hymn, Count Your Blessings. For, and before that, um, just to quote Psalm 40, verse 5. Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts toward us. It cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more they are more than can be numbered. Too many to count. Indeed, Father, thank you for the many blessings that you have given us. And sing with us, count your blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God hath done. blessings you have given us. And now we're going to have our devotion or meditation from Pastor Alois Ramos. to our uh, Wednesday prayer meeting here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. And today is uh, Wednesday, November 24th. And so today we'll 
We're just one day away, actually a few hours away, celebrating our National Day of Thanksgiving here in the United States. So with that said, let's look to God in prayer and ask the Lord to bless our time together. Our Heavenly Father, we once again come before your holy presence, acknowledging that you are the one true God, the God that we worship, the God who gave us um, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our Savior and Lord, the one who was nailed on the cross, suffered, bled, and died, buried, and on the third day rose again, so that those of us who have come to faith in him have indeed received the assurance of your promise of eternal life and all our sins forgiven. We thank you for you have adopted us as your children. We praise you and thank you for granting us your very presence in the person of the Holy Spirit. And we welcome you in our midst and we ask that you would fill us with your presence tonight so that as we look into your word, you would once again feed us with the manna of your word. Nourish us, strengthen us, comfort and encourage us. We ask that you will be exalted tonight in the teaching of your word and as we offer our praises, thanksgivings, as well as our petitions, not only for ourselves, but also for those of your people, that we may once again experience your goodness, your faithfulness, your favor, love, and mercy toward each one of us. We commit this time to you now, for with this we ask in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So tonight, as we come to the national season of Thanksgiving here in the United States, I am very, very grateful for a whole lot of things. Um, for it is embedded in our national historic heritage, you know, the word Thanksgiving. Uh, in fact, if you would remember our first president, uh, President George Washington in 1789 proclaimed that November 26th be a national day of thanksgiving and prayer as a young nation. Not only that, Abraham Lincoln responded to Sarah Hale's 17-year campaign to establish a national day of thanksgiving by proclaiming the last Thursday of November to be that day, Thanksgiving Day. And then every president thereafter issued a similar proclamation until 1941. On that year, 1941, Congress passed a piece of leg legislation signed by then President Franklin Roosevelt that established henceforth that the fourth Thursday of November, and it so happened, you know, this year, November 25 would be the nation's Thanksgiving Day. So it's pretty obvious that from the beginning, our founding fathers, the presidents, and those who are in high positions in the government recognize that the one true God is or was and is the source of the greatness and the blessings that they have received in this nation. So prior to this presidential proclamations, there were notable Thanksgiving celebrations that happened in the nation. In 1610, Jamestown uh, had not only the celebration, but also uh, having uh, used that day as a prayer, not just Thanksgiving. In 1621, you know, the Plymouth uh, Colony also uh, celebrated Thanksgiving. So, I know that for many of us here in the United States, we get so snared and entangled with all the trappings and the decorations and all the uh, business of uh, preparations and the food and all the gatherings. 
And if we are not care- careful, we will find ourselves indulge, indulging our appetites, perhaps even to the level of gluttony. Uh, I remember when I first came here in the United States, I was so surprised and shocked of how much food are on the table. And I said to myself, I wish I could bring, you know, probably half, if not half, of the food on the table to, to the Philippines. And, you know, many of our Kababayans would enjoy uh, the bounty and how sumptuous and plenty the food here in the United States. And after that night, I, I remember how many of our guests would just throw their plates, you know, into the garbage, not even finishing half of the food that they have taken. And I felt so bad, and I, you know, just kind of, that heaven is in my heart, and I wish that many of our Kababayans or fellow Filipinos uh, could come here and enjoy how much God has blessed this country. And so, of course, there's another thing that kind of, kind of pulled or tugged my heart is uh, we miss uh, the essence and the spirit of thanksgiving. Uh, where our founding fathers and presidents and the pilgrims, when they celebrated this, it is an acknowledgement of God being the source of all good and perfect thing. And they give praises to the Lord and they prayed. They prayed for rain so that the earth will be nourished and so that the plants will grow and they will have bountiful harvest and so that the animals can be fed and so that they will enjoy you know, the, the produce of the earth because of God's grace and goodness. And of course, one of those things that kind of take away uh, the spirit of Thanksgiving is the so-called Black Friday. (laughs) You know, those sales promotions. And I don't want to get so much into that, but it overshadowed the otherwise, you know, delightful time of focusing on God, of gathering together, of singing praises to him, of offering our petition before God, looking back, you know, in the past and how the Lord, you know, came through, provided, preserved, protected, and empowered us throughout the year. But in spite of whatever may not go as it should, I would like to say that as sons and daughters of the Lord, we are guaranteed that God has given us the wisdom, you know, to wisely, um, apply our hearts and our minds to this celebration so what should be the motivation for giving thanks this thanksgiving well the obvious is pretty much in the detail the obvious is pretty much you can find in the scripture so let's consider our scriptural motivation and mandate for expressing you know our endless thanks uh, to God and for God. And so I'll be reading several scripture passages here. And if we have enough time, I'll go to the details. If not, I'll continue it next uh, Wednesday. So if you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 95, verses 1 to 3. This is, much, uh, this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise. For what reason? And what is the motivation why we should sing unto the Lord and make such joyful noise? The answer is to the rock of our salvation. That is one of the reasons, one of the motivations that you and I should praise, sing praises, and give thanks to the Lord. Because He is the one who have given us our salvation. We are founded and grounded on the rock, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Joyful noise to the rock of our salvation, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. He is the rock of our salvation. Secondly, you will find it in Psalm 95, verses 1, I mean, uh, verse 3, For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The God who has given us the precious, that's such precious faith. The God who has given us the joy of our salvation. 
the assurance of eternal life, it says here that he is a great God. Not only he is a great God, he is a great king above all gods. And that's the second reason for our motivation in expressing our thanksgiving and our praise to God. He's the rock of our salvation. He is the great God. He is the God above all gods. Psalm 96, verses 1 to 2. Again, it says, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. That's the third reason why, you know, we should give thanks to God. Because he has chosen each one of us believers in the Lord to be vessels, to be instruments of his love, mercy, and grace, to show forth, to shine forth, to proclaim, you know, to witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. He could have chosen angels. He could have chosen the educated, the wealthy, but he has chosen, you know, the base things of this earth in order to shame the wise. He has chosen each one of us even before the foundation of the world. He has called us because he has called us according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says, For all things, you know, work together for good to those who love God. Uh-uh. We didn't love God first. He was the one who loves us first. And that's the reason why we could love him through the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the one who called us according to his purpose. He is the one who has chosen us in his sovereign will even before the foundation of the world, that your name and my name will be included in the book of life. And it's by grace. That is the third motivation for giving thanks. Psalm 97, verse 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holiness. At the remembrance of His holiness. God is holy. And because God is holy, only those who have the holiness of God can be with Him. It is through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, through his death, through the, his shed blood, through his burial and resurrection, and those who have believed Jesus Christ to be their Savior and Lord has given or been imputed the righteousness or the holiness of God. We have been made holy because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why we are always approved and acceptable to God because of that holiness imputed upon us. Even though we're sinners in the sight of God, as if we have not sinned. That is the fifth reason for the motivation of our thanksgiving. Psalm 98, verses 5 to 6. Sing unto the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and sound of, of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord the King. He is not only our Savior, but He is also our Lord. It means if he is Lord and King, then we are his subjects. If he is Lord and King, therefore he owns and rules a kingdom. And in that kingdom that he's talking about is not only here on earth, but it extended in heaven. And that's why in the Lord's Prayer it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. May your rule May your rule of glory, sovereignty, majesty be here on earth through your children. That the Lord Jesus Christ be the one sitting on the throne of their hearts, be the Lord and ruler because he is king. That is another reason why we have to thank God. Is he Lord? Is he really king? Or is it the self? is the one sitting on the throne of our hearts in Christ, though he's king and Lord, is the throne. And pride is always against God. Self is always against God. And that's why we need to learn, you know, to humble ourselves before God. Because God is always opposed to the proud, but he always gives grace to the humble. The humble are the ones that walk with God. The humble are the ones that walk like the Lord Jesus Christ. You know how to be humble? Begin your day with God. Start with your day with God. You know how to be humble? Allow the word of God to nourish our souls and our spirit. You and I cannot commune with God. You and I cannot praise God, cannot pray God without the word of God. It goes hand in hand. Read God's word. Meditate on God's word. Memorize God's word. The psalmist says, you know, 
because he has kept the word of God in his heart, he finds himself not sinning against God. In fact, in, in uh, Psalm 119, 97, how important, you know, the humbles are the one who put God's spurs in their hearts and in their lives. In Psalm 119, this is what it says. Those who value God's word. Oh, I, how I love thy law. It is a meditation all the day. Your commandments make me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever mine. I have more insight than all my teachers, for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, because I have observed thy precepts. I have restrained my feet from every evil way, that I may keep thy word. For thou thyself hast taught me. 103, how sweet are thy words to my taste. Yes, sweeter than honey to my mouth. From thy precept I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Psalm 97 says, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Communion and meditation comes hand in hand. So, beloved in the Lord, that's another reason, another motivation for expressing our thanksgiving to God. Psalm 99, verse 9. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at His holy here, for the Lord our God is holy. It says, exalt Him and worship at His holy here. The children of Israel would always go up to Jerusalem where the temple is. They would forsake, they will stop, they would leave anything that, that are important, anything that are close to their hearts when it comes to worship. And that what they would do is they would climb up the hill to go to the temple and worship God. And as they go up the hill, they already made preparations. See, worship, uh, preparation is key in worshiping God. And so as they climb the, the steps up to the hill, they're singing praises to the Lord. And by the time they get into the temple, their spirit is ready to worship the Lord. This, this sanctuary is kind of the hill where we come together and worship. Your secret room is also a place where you meet with the Lord. And other places where you want to be alone with Him. Do you enjoy? Do you make preparation? Coming here at church, to worship the Lord? Or do you, with heavy hearts and heavy feet, pulling yourself, just making it to a service, and then checking it with a check mark says, just to ease our conscience, I made it to the service. God is not pleased with performance. God is always pleased with Sincere and pure worship. Psalm 101, 100 verses 1 to 5. Exalt the Lord our God. I mean, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that make us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Know ye the Lord, he is God. We're given the capacity to know God. We're given the knowledge to know him. Because indeed, he is our Abba Father. It is through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ that enabled us, you know, to see the God the Father who has given us mercy and grace. It is in the lens of our spiritual eyes, and it is also in the heart where Christ is. Movement of God. Beloved in the Lord, it says, it is He that make us. He is our Creator. As Creator, He knows, you know, He is the architect he knows the design you know of our body of our life and of our path being the designer 
Shouldn't we consult Him when it comes to His plans and purposes for each one of us since He is the designer and He is the author of our faith? And it says, we are His people and the sheep of His pasture. We are not somebody's people. We are not the people of the United States, even though we receive our citizenship. We are not the people of the Philippines, even though some of us were born there. We are His people. He's the one who created us. He's the one who paid for our sins. And He is the one who crowned us with His righteousness as His chosen people, a holy nation, a peculiar people, chosen exclusively for Himself. Every president do not know its subject. Every subject do not personally know the ruler of a nation. But our God is intimately acquainted with all our ways. Can you imagine the God that we reject? The God who turn our backs? The God we continue to sin against? Says this. Turn with me to Psalm 139. This is one of my favorite uh, chapter in the book of Psalms. Psalm 139. It says, O Lord, thou search me and know me. Thou dost know when I sit down and when I rise up. Thou dost understand my thought from afar. Thou dost scrutinize my path and my lying down. And here it is. And art intimately acquainted with all my ways. Even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, Thou dost know it all. Thou hast enclosed me behind and before. That is divine protection and care. And laid thy hand upon me. That is blessing and favor. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is too high. I cannot attain to it. Need I say more? We are the sheep of his pasture. Our shepherd personally died for each one of us. Even our closest friend, even our dearest spouse, even our doting mother and a faithful father, I don't think would truly die to save us. For he alone has the power, the ability, the capability and capacity to take all of our sins and die and paid hell on our behalf. He is the sheep of our, his pasture. So the time of our national day of thanksgiving is just a few hours away. And I believe that the spirit of thanksgiving should be extended all year long. That it should be exercised and practiced every day, not just on a holiday that our founding uh, fathers and presidents and congress um, not only proclaimed, but also enacted. Psalm 103, verses 1, 2, 21, and 22. This is what it says. Truly, not only is our creator, indeed he is our savior and a wonderful Lord. Let us consider this passage. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Bless ye the Lord, all ye hosts, you minister of, the, of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all the works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. I am thankful. We should be thankful because the Lord has been good and faithful not only to me, but also to you. And I rejoice because of him, not just because of the benefits, not just because of the blessings. So from my wife, myself, our kids, to the leaders of this church, and to the greater membership of this church, it is my hope and prayer that you will have 
a blessed and enjoyable in a spiritual celebration of Thanksgiving. I hope and pray that tonight that you would even a few minutes ask the Lord to prepare your hearts in celebrating his goodness. And as you wake up tomorrow, I pray that you would turn to the passages that I just read or perhaps the Lord would lead you, you know, to scripture passages where God is nudging you or the Spirit is nudging you to exalt him, to exhort the name of the one who loves us. And I pray that that would be the theme, you know, throughout the day tomorrow and will carry through the Christmas season as we look forward to the celebration of God's greatest gift, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord bless you tonight. So at this time, we would move into the next portion of our uh, service, uh, and this is when we pray, uh, we give praise uh, for all the blessings and the goodness of God to each one of us, to our families, and to our church and missionaries that we support, and the daughter churches that uh, the Lord has allowed us to, to plant over the course of many years. Uh, it is also a time where we uh, ask and allow our members to participate, to share their praises and thanksgivings, as well as their prayer requests. And then after that, you know, we divide those prayer requests and praise items, and we pray for them individually and as a group. And then, you know, we dismiss our members having experienced, you know, worshiping God in, through the teaching of his word, having met with God, you know, in terms of bringing our petitions with him along with our thanksgiving and praises. And so, beloved in the Lord, I pray that this has uh, blessed and encouraged you and that you and I will engage ourselves in um, petitioning uh, the Lord to answer, not only to listen, but also to answer to our prayers. Uh, there's a saying that prayer moves the hand that moves the world. Prayer moves the hand that moves the world. I pray that our prayers would be coming from a pure heart, just when I spoke about the considerations, prayer considerations on Matthew chapter 6, 7 to 8. Uh, the four things that God listened to are prayers that come coming from pure hearts, um, prayers that uh, whose focus and concentration is God. Third, the prayer that is sincere. Fourth, the key is preparation when we pray, meaning we give importance to communion with God. So therefore, we prepare our hearts, you know, our spirit and our mind in meeting with the Lord. So this time, let's uh, have uh, uh, your prayer requests, and we'll switch to our Zoom. Uh, thanks. So we'll, we'll give our members time to switch to Zoom. All right, we have Ati Nancy with us uh, tonight. All right, so praise God. We have Ati Nancy uh, with us. And of course, uh, in the sanctuary, we have the Sardenas. Uh, we have uh, Alan and Pontus, Nanay Trini, and Ati Eva.